Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1265, Animal Add-ons 5, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. We have three different ball dies, and the main difference between them is size. So the surprise ball is about 20% bigger than the bitty ball, which is about 20% bigger than the mini ball. But the other big difference is what accessory pieces come with those base ball dies. And depending on those, makes a difference in whether add-on sets fit one or more of the balls or all of them. So Animal Add-ons 5, which includes 18 pieces that will cut all of this stuff you see here, is designed to fit 1201 mini ball pop-up and 1131 bitty ball pop-up. Those ball dies are sold separately. Okay, so here are those two foundation dies, the mini ball pop-up and the bitty ball pop-up. You do not have to have both. You just have to have one or the other. Here's a chick made by stacking two mini balls together, and then here's a chick made by stacking two bitty balls together. So you can see the difference in size. Now, if you happen to have both of those foundation dies, both the mini and the bitty, you could stack them together so that the head would be a little bit smaller than the body. Okay, and then looking at the bunnies, I'll show the same thing. So on the left, there is a bunny made by stacking two mini balls together. In the middle here is a mini and a bitty stacked together. And then on the right is two bitty balls stacked together. Now you also, with the bunny, have a choice in how you assemble and attach the ears as to whether you'd like a floppy-eared bunny or a tall-eared bunny. With add-ons sets, I don't duplicate pieces that are already included in the base die. And that is really seen here with the chicks because with the mini ball pop-up, there was already a great wing in the base die along with a beak and some eyes. And then with the bitty ball, you can use the heart as the beak you can use the arms as the wings. So those pieces are not included in the add-ons set. They make use of pieces out of the base die. And with both those base dies, you can already make a chick just with the pieces that are included in the foundation die. But what the add-ons set adds for the chick is the ability to have the cracked egg at the top of the chick and the bottom. So those pieces are what are included in the add-on set and they are designed for both balls. So you'll get a piece for the top eggshell that will fit the mini ball and you'll get one that will fit the bitty ball. Same thing with the bottom egg. So you're gonna get one that fits the mini ball and one that fits the bitty ball. If you are completely new to our ball dies, I'm going to send you to watch a couple other videos. So I will link those in the description box below. Depending on whether you have the bitty or the mini ball, these will go over the assembly in greater detail. All right, so first up will be the chick. Okay, for the chick, I'm going to use two mini balls stacked together for the video, but you can absolutely swap it out and use two bitty balls or stack the two balls together. So the assembly is going to be the same. So I'm not going to teach the assembly of the balls in this video. I'm just going to have you watch those other videos that go much slower, but I'll just say a few things. Number one is use those best practices, especially if you're planning on using the number 12 firm stretch rubber bands, which is my new favorite size for the mini ball pop-up. I'm using a hundred pound cardstock in the yellow and I've cut my decorator pieces out of the same. And then I'm adding all of my decorator pieces before assembly, except for the very top of the head where I'm going to swap out the hexagon and make it white to be the egg. The other ball is going to be two-tone, so it'll be white for half of the ball and yellow for the other. But again, I'm matching the weight of those cardstocks. So I wanna make sure that I'm using that strong 100-pound cardstock for both. Adhesive also makes a difference, so make sure that you're using a really strong glue. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We sell both of those items on our website. Okay, let me hit the brakes here and talk a little bit about the decorator pieces for the white side of the ball. I like to put the cracked egg pieces on before I put the decorator trapezoids. That is absolutely completely just personal preference. You could put the trapezoids on first, but if you like the look of mine, then my suggestion is don't put them on now because it'll make assembly of the ball a little more tricky. Instead, just leave your white trapezoids off the ball until it's put together. I can put the white hexagon on though. Now you see I'm covering up the hole that's in the ball. If I wanted my finished chick to spin on a brad in the finished card, then I would go ahead and pierce the hole back through that white hexagon right now and add a brad. However, my new favorite thing is to have these animals be removable from the card. So in that case, I just cover up the holes. 
For the yellow half of that ball, I am going to put all of the yellow decorator pieces on. So all of the decorator trapezoids and the hexagon. Okay, let's talk rubber bands. My very favorite brand is the Alliance rubber bands, and they come in both the Advantage, which are their firm stretch, and their Pale Crepe Gold, which are their soft stretch. And when I'm using the mini ball, my new favorite size is the number 12 firm stretch. You can absolutely buy bulk boxes of those rubber bands on places like Amazon. But if you'd like just a little bag of 50 to get you going, go to our website, shop pop-up balls and accessories. You'll find both the size 12 soft stretch and the size 12 firm stretch there. I would suggest picking up a baggie of each because then you can make those custom stretches as you need to depending on the weight of your cardstock. I'm using 100 pound cardstock for both my balls and my decorator pieces, so I should be fine to use two number 12 firm stretch rubber bands. But because those are firm stretch rubber bands, definitely make sure that you're going across and stretching them together into the slit, down into the hole, and do not let go until you almost hear them audibly click into the hole on the other side. Okay, and I can check it right now and make sure that I'm getting a good spring back and that the ball sides are not inverting. So that's fine, that's a good spring, and I can go ahead and complete the assembly. And then for broken eggshells on the bottom, you've got two pieces in the die set. It's the smaller that fits the mini ball pop-up, and I need six of those. And then each one is going to glue to the bottom half of that ball so that the cracked egg pieces are sticking up higher. So what I do is I just go down until they match the sides of the ball. And I can kind of use the ball to decide how far down my glue should go. And then again, I'm just looking at the side of the ball and I'm bringing those eggshells down until the sides match the sides of the ball. Okay, and then I'm just going to work my way around the ball, adding those pieces. And I can absolutely do that in the flat position. So I'm just using a chip clip to hold that ball closed while I add those pieces. And then once all my eggshell pieces are on, then I'm going to add those decorator trapezoids. Okay, let's talk about gaps in the ball. The first thing I wanna tell you is don't worry about gaps in the ball because it, you know they're all gonna have a little bit of gap. They're not gonna be absolutely perfect, but you can get those out minimized a little bit by either pushing one side over the other, difficult to do now that I have eggshells in place. Another way is you can collapse the ball and then work the bottom folds in both directions. And then that will kind of loosen those folds to where those rubber bands can spring those ball sides in a little bit further. So you can go around and kind of work those folds at the bottom of the hexagon if you need to pull some of the gaps out. So you can see that made a huge difference. Normally on that side, I would just go one side over the other, but that's difficult to do with the eggshells already in place. So I should have done that before adding the eggshells if that was something that bothered me. Okay, I assembled the ball for the head of the chick. I have the top labeled, that's the side that doesn't have the hexagon on it yet. And then I want the eggshell pieces for the top. And the die set does include both sizes in case you're using the bitty ball as the head. But in this case, I'm using the mini ball. So I've cut six of the smaller size, and then they all have a fold line on them. So I'm going to work that fold as a mountain fold, meaning I'm folding away from myself. And then attaching those pieces to the top of the ball is just a matter of putting that strong adhesive around the perimeter and then just setting the fold of the piece right in the fold of the ball. And then I can work my way all the way around the ball just attaching those pieces into that exposed adhesive. And then once I have all six on, then I can add some adhesive to the back of my decorator hexagon and center that right over the top. All right, once I get that hexagon on, I can press the ball down, give everything a good press in the closed position. And when it pops up, there will be loose eggshells. Now, if you want to have those not splay out quite as far, you can always add little pieces of foam tape or pop dot underneath there to kind of keep them slightly angled downward. I like to line up the rubber band sides between the head and the body when I'm gluing them together. So adhesive all over the body, and then I just look for the side of the body and the head where they both have the rubber bands going in the exact same direction. It really is just personal preference, but I like the look of the rubber band side as the face of the animal. The rest of the pieces to complete the chick will come out of the foundation die set. So I'm using the mini ball pop-up. So I've assembled the eyes that come in that foundation die set, glue those onto the front. Then there is a beak 
in the mini ball set. So I'm going to glue that on, just using adhesive at the top and letting it overlap the eyes a little bit and kind of hang over the edge. With the wings, I like to curl them outward and then only use adhesive at the shoulder area, and that way they can extend out over the egg. And then the last piece to complete that hatching chick will be the bow tie. Just glue that to the body. So that's the completed hatching chick if you're using two stacked mini balls. And then if you're using only the bitty ball, there are some pieces in that base die that can be used as well. So there's an arm piece that makes great wings. You still have a bow tie. You can use the heart as the beak. Or if you have both balls, you can stack them together and use your favorite wing and your favorite bow tie and your favorite beak. Okay, now let's talk about making an Easter Bunny. With the Easter Bunny, all the pieces are very straightforward. You just die cut them out of the proper color. Now the eye is the only one that has a stencil feature. So in that case, before removing the die from the black cardstock, or in this case, I used mirror cardstock, just go through that stencil feature with a white gel pen or a white paint pen, depending on what you know, type of material you're using, and add that catch light. Since I used the mini ball for the chick, I thought I would use the bitty ball for the bunny, so I've assembled two of them out of white 100-pound cardstock and used white pieces for all of the decorator pieces. And then instead of two number 12 soft stretch, I tried a mixture, a 12 soft stretch with a 12 firm stretch in each ball, and that seemed to give me really nice tension. For gluing the head to the body, once again, I like to line them up so that the rubber band sides match up. So I just look which way the rubber band is going through the ball and I make it match on the bottom and the top. Okay, I've die cut all of the pieces out of Animal Add-ons 5 to make the bunny. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue the pink nose to the piece that makes the cheeks. So I've cut the cheeks out of white, the nose out of pink, it also looks great out of black. And then there is a die in the set that will cut the teeth of the rabbit. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the top of the teeth and then glue that behind the cheeks. Okay, this next step is just a styling tip. You don't have to do it, but I like to add a couple freckles to my bunny. So I'm going to take a black pen and just draw three freckles on each side. Next, I'm going to take the larger oval from the set and glue those on as the background of the eyes. So on the, in that case, I have those on the front face of the bunny, just kind of side by side. They can stick out a little bit, maybe above or to the sides of the piece. And then I have the piece that I use the stencil feature on to cut the interior portion of the eyes. And then that I've done out of a black mirror card. And I added double-sided adhesive tape to the back of the mirror card before die cutting so that those pieces would be stickers. Then when I go to glue on the cheeks portion, I have that overlap the eyes just a little bit, and I made sure that I only put glue on the back of the cheeks where it would touch the pop-up, so not all the way behind the teeth and everywhere that is hanging off the edges. The bow tie came out of the Bitty Ball Foundation die set, so I'm just going to glue that to the front of the body. Okay, let's talk about bunny ears. So there is a die that will cut the interior portion of the ear, and then there's a die that will cut the exterior portion of the ear. And it depends which way you plan to attach the ear as to which side the decorator piece goes on. So I'm going to work the tab at the bottom of the white one. Since I've decided to do a floppy eared bunny, I'm going to attach the pink decorator piece to the back of the ear. So it will be underneath the floppy ears. If I had wanted to do a tall eared bunny, then I would have glued the pink decorator piece to the front of the ear. So it's just completely which ear you want to make. I like to put that decorator piece on even for a floppy eared bunny because then it's easy to curve it with both pieces together like this and then it will keep its curve. So having those two pieces glued together makes it easy to curve the ear. So I'm just gonna do that between my fingers and get a curve in that ear. And then for attaching to the bunny, I just use adhesive in the tab. I'm doing a floppy eared bunny so I'm just going to attach it to the sides of the ball. And you know, location on that is really just kind of completely up to you. So I usually just go kind of right up to the corner of the decorator piece. Seems to be a good location for a floppy eared bunny. For a tall eared bunny, I use the same tabs to attach the ears, but just to the back of the ball so that the ears are sticking straight up. Another styling tip is that you can use the black pen again just to add some claws marks to the ends of the arms. 
You can make bunny rabbits year round, but when you would like to style it as an Easter bunny, there is a basket in the set along with a piece of grass. So you just put the grass down through the cut in the basket and then add a little bit of glue underneath to attach the grass to the back of the basket. Then what I like to do to add the eggs is just to get some glue in between the grass and the basket. And then what I can do is just take those eggs and just weave them in between the layers and then into that glue. So there's a die in the set that will cut three eggs. So what I've done is just cut them out of three different colors. And then I'm just putting three eggs in the basket attached behind the grass but in front of the basket. For bunny arms, just like chick wings, I add the glue to the shoulder area and then those arms can go anywhere you like at whatever angle attached to the side of the bunny. You can experiment with different looks with how he holds the basket, but what I'm going to do is just add a little adhesive to the top of the handle of the basket and then weave the arm through the basket, so over the handle and behind the eggs and attach it that way. And then for the carrot, it is a two-piece carrot that comes in the set. So when you're making bunny rabbits year round, you might be having your bunny holding carrots instead of an Easter basket. Or you can do both. So I'm just going to do both, a little bit of glue in the carrot and then attaching that to the other arm. Okay, the bunny is almost done. The only thing left is the feet and the tail. You see it collapses down nicely. So for feet, you use the cheeks again. So if you were using the mini ball, you might just leave those two feet connected and just add some claws marks and glue them up underneath the ball. But if you're using the bitty ball on the bottom, then you may want to separate the feet. So in that case, cut up the middle to make two feet, turn them so the flat side is towards the inside, and then draw your claws marks out on the end. And then those feet can really go anywhere that you like on the bottom of the bunny. So what I tend to do is just add the glue on the bottom of the bunny kind of up in the corners, and then I just press those feet into that glue so that they're sticking out at whatever angle that I like. Okay, and then the last step is just to add the tail on the back of the bunny. So for that one, it's really up to you. I just add adhesive on one half of the tail and then stick it to the bottom half of the bunny so that a portion of it is sticking up. The add-ons add to the footprint, the size of the card you need. So even though a bitty ball alone would fit in a four and a quarter inch square card, once you start adding tails and floppy ears and teeth, then you see it increases the footprint. But I can still fit that decorated bunny using bitty balls in a five by five square card or bigger. I could probably get down to four and a half or four and three quarter on the height if I just lowered the tail. So I mentioned early on that I actually prefer now to make the animals removable from the card for display. And what I usually do is I attach the finished animal to a shape die. So in this case, I'm using our crosshatch ovals and I'm using the second to the largest crosshatch. Not only does that oval make for a nice little display stand, but it also allows me to create a card where I have strips of paper in the card that I can slide the edges of that oval under. And what that does is it keeps the animal in the card when it first springs up. So when someone opens the card, the animal doesn't fly out of the card and onto the floor. It will be trapped by those pieces of paper, but it's really easy to just rotate the animal and get it out of there. This Easter card is our project for our March 2024 virtual class made with a little pop-up bunny inside. So that video is going to premiere on this YouTube channel on March 9th, 2024. Once I have the link, I'll put it in the description box below if you'd like to see me make that Easter card. The best place to find information about upcoming classes is to check the events page on our website. Now these type of ball animal cards will be extra postage, so just plan on that. A bubble mailer is probably your best bet. I love to end assembly videos by looking at some inspiration from our very talented design team. Another option for the ball animals is to present them in a box, and we have a free download on our website. Go to Kits and Classes when you're shopping, and then you will find Karen's Pretty Springy Ball Box templates. You just have to put them in your cart and check out. It's zero dollars, and then you will get those PDF templates. Lois sent me one where she had put a stacked animal in a box. So here on the front, she's used the spring animals. That's a great companion die to animal add-ons five because then you've got the small animals that match the big ball animals. And then inside the box, Lois added a pop-up chick. Now what she did is she put a couple strips of paper to hold the 
piece down. She used a square as her base, but I really like this idea. She just used those crown pieces for the egg at the very base of the ball instead of putting them sticking up. Now what that does is it gives you a smaller footprint. See how the eggs don't stick out at all on the base? So that means you can get that down into a smaller box or card. So really, really great alternate assembly by Lois. Look at these cutie patootie boxed animals by Jen Webster. I just love her use of color here, but notice what she did. She just drew on small eyes onto the animals and what a different look. Also love how she put the ears on the bunny. So just mess around with those ears. You can put them in different spots. Here's a slimline version by Frances Byrne, and she has not only used the Animal Add-ons 5, but I like her use of the Easter borders to decorate and that long flap enclosure to keep the card closed. Another adorable card, this time by Fran Sabad, with a woven basket bouquet on the front of the card with a rear view bunny, and then that removable bunny on the inside. The mini ball pop-up includes a brow feather piece for the owl, and what Sandy did here is she used that for the chick and eliminated the egg pieces on top. And definitely check out those Easter borders and Happy Easter dies because they are such great companion dies, as you can see in this cute card by Nikki Foden. For this waterfall card, Nikki Foden used the Animal Add-ons 5 bunny parts to make a flat bunny. So that's another thing that you can do with this die set. Here's another idea, this time by Francis, using those Animal Add-ons to make a flat bunny. Here's one by Sue Small Crider, where she made a bookmark using those bunny parts. And then finally, a card by Sue Small Crider, where she actually created a three-tier cake and turned it into a bunny using those add-ons. Animal Add-ons 5 is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com, where you can purchase these dies, as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.